Hello, I'm Alexia, and let me help you to take the fear out of birth with a mix of real-life positive birth stories and birthing experts sharing their wisdom. I'll also be sharing techniques for getting into the fearless birthing mindset. And join the Fearless Mumership community for bonus podcast episodes, access to free birth preparation downloads, and loads more stuff to help you to prepare for a positive birth. Join today at fearfreechildbirth.com. Hello and welcome back to the Fear Free Childbirth Podcast. This is me, your host, Alexia Leitrim. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, in today's episode, I want to talk to you about how you can reduce your fears. And it's a little bit of a practical episode because I really want to talk you through one of the techniques that I use that's part of my fear clearance toolbox. Now, I've got a few, so um, I'm not going to be able to go through all of them with you here, but I really want to give you a little bit of an inkling uh, to the main technique that I use, the one that has really helped me the most. And so that's what today's podcast is all about. Now, the first step with clearing your fears is knowing what your fears are. Now, this is, it might sound really silly for me to say this, but many people aren't really that clear about their fears. They, it's, for some people, it can be a little bit nebulous, if that makes sense, a little bit like a, this big murky mess that kind of hangs over their head, but they're not really clear on what those specifics are. And I know, because this is something that I went through when I was tocophobic and when I was pregnant in my first pregnancy, I felt like there was this big, big cloud of fear. And I really wasn't sure much more than that. It was just, well, I'm fearful of birth and that was it. I really wasn't sure what it was about birth that I was well, I was afraid of. And so this is why I'm asking you to really sit down and think about your fears, because it's only when you start looking them in the eye, it's only when you start really focusing on what they might be that you can have any hope at all of moving past them. Now, sometimes just the act of writing them down, of having some clarity and self-awareness about your fears, that alone can already start to reduce them because you, you know, the minute you start writing them down, you look at them and go, what? Why am I scared of this? This is crazy. And so you might realise that actually they're not worth your fear. You know, there's only so much fear we have to give in the world. So sometimes you might decide that this is not worth you giving your fear to. So the first thing to do is really to sit down and sit with your fears and write them down. And one thing that I find is that the minute you start doing that, a lot of them become more clear. They they suddenly start appearing. The minute you start focusing on them, they suddenly, you're suddenly becoming aware of them. You might sort of ask yourself the question and, and that's why it's really important to sit down and write your fears down because you're making a real clear signal to your subconscious that you're trying to tackle this and you want to sort it out. And so your subconscious will then start loosening its grip on your fears and, and letting them float to the surface and then you'll become more aware of them because at the moment it's possible that a lot of your fears are buried quite deep within. Now, I know with a lot of the work that I do with pregnant women, with fearful pregnant women that are preparing for their birth, is they first start working with it and they're like, oh, well, I'm not not, not too scared about things. I've got a little bit worried about this and that. And they, they sort of don't sound too fearful. However, the minute we sort of start working on stuff, lots of things start popping up because it's actually just been buried beneath the surface. Or another way, another thing that happens is as the women get closer to birth, as the pregnancy evolves and moves forward, suddenly things start coming up to the surface because it's getting more real. So whereas in your first trimester, you might be sitting there thinking, this is amazing, I'm pregnant, I'm full of joy and happiness of the world. And then then the reality kicks in. And in your second trimester, you start thinking, oh my goodness, this is real. I'm going to have to deal with X, I'm going to have to deal with Y. And suddenly you start worrying about stuff. But also, as your bump starts showing, there's going to be loads of horror stories lurking around you as people start telling you about their awful pregnancy. So suddenly you might have these fears come in that weren't there at the beginning. And that's not because that you're making yourself scared or whatever. It's just because as something is coming closer, it's becoming more real. Things are coming to the surface and you're thinking about it a bit more. So why not take control of that process and actively try and seek out your fears and understand what they are as early as possible so that you can do something about it? Anyway, so that is step one, basically. Identify your fears. And this is why it is such an important step. And like I said earlier, you need to sit down, take a quiet moment and take a notepad and write this stuff down. And I like to think of my fear clearance list as a to-do list. So you need to keep it really 
concise. You need to, you know, when you write a to-do list, usually you just write bullet points, you know, like five words or something. You just say, hey, do the washing, put the ironing on or go and fetch such and such in town. Or, you know, it, it's kind of a, a short thing that you go, yep, yeah, that's what that is. So this is what you need to think about when you're writing your fears out. What you're not writing is, well, I have a fear of childbirth that makes me feel X, Y, Z, and then this happens and then this happens and blah, 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 blah. Because then you've got this crazy long sentence that we can't work with. You need to be really specific. So for example, I had an email from a lady today and she was like, well, I don't know how to do this because I, my fear is a fear of not being able to handle childbirth, including panic attacks, management of sensations, feeling out of control, blah, 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 blah. You see, that's a really long thing to name as your fear when actually what she's written is not being able to hand childbirth, which is a fear of childbirth. So it's write down fear of childbirth. Um, Then she's got panic attacks. So I'm presuming that she doesn't like having panic attacks. Who would, right? So write down panic attacks or fear of panic attack. And then management of sensations. That feels like maybe she's sort of worried about the powerfulness of the sensations of the pain, potentially. Maybe that's a word that she might use. So write down that management of sensations, feeling like you can't cope, that kind of thing. So feeling not be able to cope, you know, these are really short bits. And then feeling out of control, that's a massive one too. That is a really massive one. So separate the stuff out. Don't bundle it all together. Really try and peel it apart to its sort of most specific singular thing, if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, so back to how to clear your fears. Now, the second step is get a copy of a technique that will help you to clear your fears. Now, there are lots of techniques out there, but I have got my firm favourites. Now, in my Fearless Birthing Academy, which is my online programme for women that want to clear their birthing fears and have an amazing pregnancy and prepare for a positive birth or have the positive birth, actually, not just prepare for it, but actually have it. So um, that in, in my Fearless Birthing Academy, I share about five te- five techniques. I think I keep adding to them because I keep discovering new ones and, and adding them in. Uh, and there's there's one technique that kind of dominates as being my go to preferred technique that I use mainly for everything. But it's quite a meaty technique. So I'm not going to be able to talk it through in its entirety right here. But the main technique is the five step head trash clearance method. Now, it works brilliantly. It really does work brilliantly. But while I can't give you the whole thing now, what I can give you is a snippet of it. So you can get a sense of how to use it. And if you want to get the snippet of it, then you can get that copy. You can download it and I'll give you a link so you can download that. But just so you know, it is a light version of it, if that's such a thing, rather than the full version of it. But that is not to say it doesn't work. Obviously, it won't work. It won't have the full power of the full version, but it does work. And let me just tell you about a time when I used the light version. In fact, two times that I used the light version to amazing effect. So first of all, I used this light version when I was pregnant in my first trimester. This is when my first pregnancy, it might have even been the pregnancy where I lost my baby and I had a miscarriage. I can't remember the one, but basically I had a huge fear of needles and injections. And as with most tocophobic women, they have a fear of all things medical. And for me, that was definitely the case. So I could not even look at a needle without possibly having a panic attack and fainting. Many times I've been revived in a doctor's surgery, having fainted on the floor. So I had a real issue about injections. And here I was in my first trimester, having to go to see the midwife with my fear. So I got to the appointment and she's basically saying, well, we're going to have to give you a load of injections because you've got this blood thing, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't hear anything after the word injections, to be honest, because that's when my fear just kicked in. And I suddenly was thinking, oh, insert expletive here. So yeah, I was in a right old state. And and I think my eyes at that point popped out on sticks. And she went, oh, don't worry. Um, It's not right now. I was like, oh, whew. she goes, because we need to get all the needles ready. You need to wait outside. And I was like, what? Get all the needles ready. This isn't a nightmare. So anyway, I went outside to wait while they were getting all the needles ready. And I was in a right old tears, as you can imagine. And so it was when I was first training in this technique. So it's probably my first pregnancy, actually. And I was like, right, OK, if this is any good at clearing fear, then you need to sort this out. I was talking to the technique at the time, like pointing my finger in the air as if say, come on, then show me what you're made of. And so that's what I did. I sat down in the corridor while they're getting all the needles ready and I worked on my fear of needles and injections. Now, I didn't have time to do the full technique. I only had time to do the light version, which is the one I give away. So that's what I did. And then in about, I don't know, I had about four minutes. This is how quickly I managed to do it four minutes later, she called me in because it only takes about that long, right, to get about three needles ready. 
And she called me in and she said, oh, so um, are you scared of needles then? And I looked and went, no, no. And then I thought, oh my goodness, did I just say that? Did I just say that? This is that this is new to me. And then I sat down and I saw the needles and I was fine. I was a bit apprehensive because I was like, this is weird. I've never, ever been near a needle or about to have an injection and not start freaking out. So I was freaking out about something else, which was the, the weirdness of this situation. But it certainly wasn't the needles or the injections that was making me all freaky. And so I went ahead and uh, we we had the needle. I had the needles done and it was absolutely fine. And and that was that. And after that, I had to have a regular injection with my midwife because it's blood thing. And every time it was completely fine. And in fact, one of the midwives said to me, you've got to be one of the most relaxed people I've ever given an injection to. And I was like, you are kidding me. Seriously? Like, is this is there a camera hidden somewhere here? And so that is basically what happened when I used this light version of the technique. So I'm just sharing that with you because what I share is, you know, even though it's not the full meaty version, it certainly can help you. And the other time that I use this light version is a super really useful time that I think you will definitely want to know about. And that was in between contractions when I had a fear of the pain of the ring of fire came out of nowhere when my baby was crowning. And that's when I used it again. And it worked brilliantly then too. So this is what I'm sharing with you is this the light version of the five step head trash clearance method. Now, um, once you've got your method there, basically I'm going to talk you through there's there's a few steps in there that I'm just going to talk through really briefly because I don't want to go into too much detail right here because I've been talking already way too long. Um, so but basically it starts off with step one, which we've done already, which is identify your fears. And then step two is you've really got to tune in to your fear. You've really got to kind of tune into it and see how it makes you feel. What do you notice in your mind and body? when you think about this fear. Like, how do you know you're scared? What is it that's happening in your head or in your body that's telling you that you're scared? And so this is really important. This really helps to raise our self-awareness about fears, because as we start tuning into the mind, we tune into the body, we start to become aware of when we are becoming fearful. And that really helps us to sort of manage our fears much better. So a really important part of this process is to really tune into your fear and notice how it's making you feel in both your mind and your body. You know, you know, have you got thoughts racing in your head? Have you got loads of images flicking around in your head, like worst, you know, big scenarios of all the worst possible things that could happen with your fear coming true in your head? Have you got voices in your ears shouting, this kind of thing? Are you noticing tension anywhere in your body? This is the kind of thing I mean when I'm saying tune in to how your fear makes you feel. And then you've got to rate that out of 10 because I'm a numbers girl. I used to be in business. I was in the corporate world and I like to measure things and I like to know if it works. And if it doesn't work, then I stop using it. Um, And the reason I'm still using this five step head trash clearance method is because it works amazingly. And I know that because I'm measuring it all the time. And that's why I'm asking you to rate it out of 10. So that's why I'm saying rate this feeling out of 10. You know, when you think about your fear, how scared are you of this out of 10? 10 being utterly terrified. You can say 14 if you want, um, or, you know, put it at seven, whatever it is. Uh, If if it's only a two, then why are you working on this? It's probably not even worth worrying about. So really, you know, number it, get a number, put a number down, and then you work through the steps. Now you get some mantras as part of this technique. And the light version only contains two mantras. The full version contains 10 mantras. And so what you're going to do then is insert your head trash into the blank space that I've put in the mantra. So you get this as part of your download. There'll be a blank space and you can put your head trash in it. That's why I'm saying keep this stuff simple. Keep it really simple because you're inserting your head trash into a sentence. So if you've already got a sentence to start with, it's not going to be workable. It's just not going to be workable. So keep it simple. So fear of childbirth, fear of pain, that kind of thing. And then you clear it using the technique that I shared with you. It basically involves applying pressure on some acupressure points on the body while you're saying these mantras. And that is basically it. And then at the end of it, you you rate it again and see how you've done, see how much it's come down. Now, obviously, with the technique that I'm sharing with you for free, you might notice a complete clearance, which is what I did when I did my injections uh, fear. And when I cleared my fear of the pain of the ring of fire, that completely cleared. But if it hasn't, it probably means you need the full technique, which I'm afraid is not free. That's part of my training in the Fearless Birthing Academy. But if you've had, if you've noticed some difference using this 
technique already, then that might be something that you want to consider. So that is basically how you can go about clearing your fears. Now, also, I've also got a three part video series that shares another snippet of a technique that I use that is really great to use before the, the five step clearance method. And it really does help you to shift your perspective about fears and really kind of think about them in a very, very different way. And if you want to get hold of that technique, then you can sign up for my three part video series anywhere on the website. There are little banners everywhere where you can just sort of sign up for it and it'll come straight into your inbox. There's also a box in the show notes for the episode for this podcast that you can sign up for straight away as well. So that is basically how I would go about clearing fears. Now, of course, there are many, many other techniques out there that you can use to clear fears. This is not the only ones that then this what I've shared with you are not the only ones that exist, but they are the ones that I've used and that I've had results with. I've tried a lot of techniques because I was massively fearful and I'm a trained therapist and a coach. so I've trained in a lot of techniques in my time. The fear of needles and injections. I was I used NLP on that, which is a well-known technique that many, many coaches and, and, and therapists use. And it didn't do anything for it. I trained with the co-creator of it and with Paul McKenna, who's a reasonably well-known TV uh, personality in terms of hypnosis and that kind of thing. And even while I was able to clear it a tiny bit, it came right back the minute I actually had an injection. So it didn't last at all long. So, you know, I'm saying this from a perspective of somebody that has tried a lot of techniques and I wouldn't share something with you if I didn't believe in it and know that it worked because at the end of the day, I just want to share what's worked for me. So that is how I would recommend that you clear your fears. And if you have any questions about this, then you know where to find me. Until next time, bye for now. You've just been listening to me, Alexia Leachman, here on the Fear Free Childbirth Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, this is just a wee reminder that if you'd like to listen to bonus podcast episodes and have access to loads of birth preparation downloads, my video mini series on reducing your fears and so much more, then join the fearless mamaship community today. You can join at fearfreechildbirth.com. Until next time, bye for now.